I am going to talk about a very interesting topic post independence English literature. The topic is all the more relevant as the country is celebrating Amrit Mahotso or the 75th year of our independence. Independence was a turning point not only in the political history of India but also in its literary progression. I'll divide my discourse into four subdivisions. The first part throws light on the meaning and definitions of the term post-colonialism or post-independence. Second part attempts to trace the origin and the development of post-colonial theory. Third part analyzes the post-colonial Indian English authors like Salman Rushdie and Anita Desai. The final and fourth part will analyze the impact created by the post-colonial Indian English writers on the Indian readers with regard to nationalism. Now I'll discuss what is post-colonialism or post-independence literature. The word post is derived from the Latin term postis which means after or behind. The word colony takes its origin from the Latin term colonus which refers to a cultivator, a planter or a settler in a new land. Literally, the term post-colonialism refers to the period after colonialism. Broadly, the term post-colonialism refers to the ways in which race, ethnicity, culture and human identity itself are represented in the modern era after many colonized countries gained their independence. Until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. These words stresses the necessity and significance of post-colonial literature. The term post-colonial literature refers to the literature produced by the people who were formerly colonized and subjugated. In other words, post-colonial literature refers to the body of works by the colonized people to inhalate the influences exerted by the colonizers in their lives. Post-colonial literature emerged in the mid-20th century when many colonized nations were fighting for their liberation from the colonizers. The term post-colonial has become a convenient term to describe any kind of resistance against race, gender and class oppression. Post-colonial writers differ in their view of the choices of language in post-colonial writings. Some writers stress the use of native language in their works. These writers strongly believe that their age-old customs, manners and traditions can be expressed best in their native language. Another set of writers prefer the uses of the language of the colonizers, may it be English or French. These writers wanted to enhance the inter-nation communication by writing in English. They aim at redirecting the tool of language against the colonizers. The post-colonial English writers employ the colonizers' language to oppose the colonizers and to rectify the damages created by them in the historical, social, cultural and economical sects. However, these writers transform the English language so as to create a native experience. Post-colonial writers like Raja Rao and Mulk Raj Anand are of the view that the imperial language need to be transformed in order to suit the native readers. In foreword of Kanthapura, Raja Rao writes, One has to convey in a language that is not one's own. The spirit that is one's own, one has to convey the various shades and omissions of a certain thought, movement that looks maltreated in an alien language. I use the word alien, yet English is not alien language to us. It is the language of our intellectual makeup like Sanskrit or Persian was before, but not of our emotional makeup. The post-colonial writings are replete with regional dialects and native phrases so as to suit the native readers. Post-colonial theory is a literary theory or critical approach 
which focuses on the literature produced by the countries which were once colonized in some instances it also deals with the literature written by the colonizing countries which takes colonies and their people as the subject matter in nutshell post colonial theory involves discussion about experience of various kinds migration slavery suppression resistance representation difference race gender place and responses to the influential matter discourses of imperial europe such as history philosophy and linguistics and the fundamental experiences of speaking and writing by which all these come into being none of these is essentially post colonial but together they form the complex fabric of the field the indian subcontinent remained under the british imperial rule for more than 200 years during this the natives were subjugated to a number of harassments especially the cultural and moral lives of the natives were deeply disconfigured accordingly the indian writers emerged with a view to unite indians and to wipe out the colonial perspectives as there were many regional languages in india the indian writers in english came to be known as indian english literature the early works of the indian english authors were set against the backdrop identity the writers also dealt with a variety of sub themes such as rootlessness alienation gender discrimination labor exploitation hybridity poverty corruption marginalism and so on among the various genres of post colonial indian english literature the genre of novel emerged as the most successful and effective one the early exponent of post colonial indian english literature are bankim chand chatterjee ishwar chand vidya sagar shri arvindo ravindranath tagore mulk raj anand raja rao r k narayan and so on the writers of the modern age are salman rushdie hanif khureshi amitab ghosh vikram seth shashi tharoor and so on the post colonial indian english literature gave enormous scope for the women writers the women writers who received universal recognition are nayantara sahgal anita desai arundhati roy kiran desai jhumpa lehri and so on salman rushdie's second novel midnight children published in 1981 used a new trend in the post colonial writings through the applications of a technique named magical realism the technique of magical realism is used by the indian english writers as a post colonial effort to resist the european notions of realism magical realism promotes hybridity of cultures by defamiliarizing the readers and by broadening their perspective of the global world The novel is narrated by the protagonist Salim who stands as a representative of the new class of Indian youths after independence by endowing the protagonist with magical powers the novelist speculates on a variety of themes like nationalism realism partisan politics and so on the novelist asserts the fact that in the post colonial indian scene the growth and development of each and every individual is directly proportional to the wholesome development of the nation the women writers of the post colonial indian english literature switched on to microscopic themes of alienation poverty isolation and disillusionment in the familial lives of the indian folk anita desai's first novel cry the peacock published in 1963 echoes the sufferings and agony of the indian women folk maya the protagonist of the novel experiences an unhappy marital life maya has been married to a middle aged lawyer named gautam who devotes much of his time to his career the astrologer's predictions about maya's early demise make her nervous she wants to enjoy life to the fullest with this minimal time however 
all her sexual advances has a cold response from gautam in a sense of dejection maya is driven insane which leads to gautam's tragic death maya's sense of alienation and rootlessness results the plight of the entire indian women folk in her book the second sex simon de beauvoir says as one is not born but rather becomes a woman no biological psychological or economic fate determines the figure that the human female presents in society it is civilization as a whole that produces this culture in this way the post colonial indian english authors composed their works with a view to voice the sufferings of the underprivileged in order to uplift them thereby contributing to the growth of the nation both culturally and socially having relieved themselves from the manacles of imperialism the indian people rejoiced and enjoyed the fresh air of freedom with a sense of reverence towards the nation but this unity was soon shaken up by the various anti social elements who encouraged a sense of discrimination in the minds of the indians in terms of race gender caste color creed reason language and so on the anti nationalist forces wanted to divide people so as to obstruct the progress of the country hence the people of india must bear in mind the importance of unity which alone can pave way for the nation's progress in the book rise up and salute the sun suzy kazan writes man kind should always stay united standing shoulder to shoulder so evil can never cheat and divide them in this regard literature plays vital role in the integration of a country albert camus expresses the purpose of a writer is to protect the civilization from destroying itself it is possible only for a writer to shape the minds of the readers so as to lead them towards a holistic view of nationalism the post colonial indian writers continue to exert a dominant influence in the indian scenario by inculcating the values and significance of nationalism